per sheet. Hallelujah. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. My, I tell you what. Wow. Right. Look over at your neighbor and say, wow. 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 My, my, my. Wow. He leaves me speechless. Amen. Oh, yeah. Joy unspeakable. Speechless. Amen. Can't Hallelujah. explain it. Right. Amen. Can't put it into words. Amen. Amen. I was talking to someone this week. I think it was this week, last few days anyway. And I told them when I get to talking about my beautiful wife, I just lose words. Amen. I can't explain how I feel about her. Amen. Well, it's double that for me and Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I really can't explain how He makes me feel, what He's done for me. Amen. Right. Brother Mike stirred me up Tuesday night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah the 50th chapter and the 4th verse where the Mike read this scripture. It says, The Lord hath given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to Amen. him that is weary. Right. Amen. Right. He awakeneth morning by morning. He awakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Come on. And Brother Mike preached on the subject a word in season. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 15 and 23 says, A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season. How good is it? That's right. Can I read that again this morning? Right a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season. How good is it? Amen. Amen. How sweet it is. Amen. Amen. A word spoken Woo! in due season. Proverbs 25 and 11 says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Uh -huh. Amen. Proverbs 12 and 14, A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Right. Amen. Amen. You will eat the fruit of your mouth. Amen. Right. One way the, how many people ever heard the old saying, or you ain't just heard it, you've experienced it. You yeah. had to eat your words. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 How many times have you had to eat your words? Amen. Amen. Oh, I know some of you in here haven't, but I have Amen. a lot of times. Amen. 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 Several times this past week. Amen. Amen. Had to eat my words. Yeah. <laughs> how many people ever heard the old saying, had to eat crow? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Proverbs 13 and 2 says, A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of a transgressor shall eat violence. Amen. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but Amen. he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. That's right. right. Amen. Huh. So we're talking this morning about a word spoken to the weary in season. Amen. Amen. A good word spoken. Right. Not that stuff you usually speak. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. But a good word spoken. My, 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 how sweet it is. And I know some of you this morning thought that I just wore this tie because it's so pretty. Amen. Uh -huh. But actually, we're going to go to Genesis, the 8th chapter. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about Noah and the folks on the ark there. Genesis, the 8th chapter. Beginning in the first verse, King James Version, of course. No word. Brother Bill said the only version. The rest of them is what? Per versions. Amen? <laughs> Genesis 8 and 1. Amen. When you get there, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. As one preacher puts it over television, if you believe it, say amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. And God remembered Noah... And every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. Uh -huh. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. And the, rains, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of 150 days the waters were abated. And the ark rested the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountain of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually into the tenth month. And in the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. Amen. 
And it came to pass at the end of 40 days, and after explaining all of that, the Lord begins now to explain to us some of the things that were going on during this time. Before the waters were gone. Amen? It says... Where did I lose my lost my place? Where was that? Verse 6. Some of you said 6. Some of you said 7. <laughs> All right, and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark, which he made. And he had been on the ark now. Think about this, church. He'd been on there for about seven months. Yeah. This was seven months after the flood had began. Amen? Yeah. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days Noah opened the ark, opened the window of the ark, which he had made. And he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro, until the waters were dried up from the earth. Now, what was his reasoning for sending the raven? The raven was a cousin to a buzzard. Right. We learned that before, amen? A scavenger. And no one knew that after the waters went down, there's going to be a lot of dead carcasses out there, the yeah. animals that didn't get aboard, amen? Yeah. Right. And he knew that if the water had gone down anywhere, he believed that the smell of the rotten carcass would attract the raven and the raven would go off, find somewhere to feed and not come back. But the Bible says that the raven went to and fro. Amen? Until the waters were dried. So this means that after he sent the raven forth and he's watching and thinking, you know, maybe the raven found some food today. Maybe the waters are beginning to go down. No, yeah. he'd see that old raven coming back. Yeah. It went to and fro until the waters were gone. Amen. That's right. So here we find Noah, I keep on calling Jonah, <laughs> on the ark seven months. And now he's opened the window, Sister Nancy, and I know some of you are going to look at me like, like I fell out of a well when I get to the punchline of it. Never seen this before. And he's looking for some sign of hope that God had remembered His covenant with him. Come on. Seven months can be a long time to be shut up with a bunch of stinky animals. Right. right. Amen. Amen. You think it's bad because you got trapped in an elevator for 35 minutes with the man who ain't took a bath. Amen. <laughs> right. How would you like me and Brother the Rodney got in the elevator not too long ago? There was about 10 or 12 of us in there and it wasn't no bigger than... And I thought, Lord, please... Don't let this elevator get stuck. Because right. somebody hadn't used no deal. Amen? Preach. I didn't want to be stuck in there no longer than I had to be. Preach. So you think that's bad. What if you was stuck on the ark? And I know it was big, but I know it had to stink. Come on. Amen? Amen? All of those animals. So here's Noah, and he's looking for some sign of hope All right. Right. that God's promise was still intact. I realize the Bible doesn't say that he was questioning God, and I'm not saying that he was, but I am telling you this. He was a man. He was made out of the same dirt that you're made out of, and the same thoughts that go through your mind more than likely went through his. That's right. How many times have you wondered, God, what have you done? Have you forgot about me? It doesn't seem like my prayers are going no higher than my ceiling. Right. And it seems like I can't get no prayer through. And you're looking for some sign of hope. Yep. So he sends out the raven, and the raven doesn't help his hope any. Amen? All right. And then it says in verse 8, He sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. Uh -huh. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. And she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand, and he took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. What was he looking for when he sent out the dove? You see, the dove don't eat on no dead carcass. Right. Amen. He believed that the dove would go out with the meal. And if there was a tree out there somewhere sticking above the water, that the dove would bring something back, a, a sign of hope, a, a leaf in his mouth, a, something to encourage him that the promise of God was still intact. Come 